Dear students, welcome and thank you for tuning in. We are still discussing product architecture as part of the product design development course. In this video, we are going to show some examples and practice how can we decide what is the architectural model that is used in the specific product. We want to identify whether a product is using modular as opposed to integral architecture. I'm showing here in this picture a lot of products and I want you to think with me about whether they are modular or integral architecture uh, based products we have the motorola cell phone it's an old one it's not been used for a long time i guess uh, also we have the apple ibook we have the ford explorer skate roller blade inline skates and i want you to think with me about whether they're modular or integral you can stop the video you can think about it and then we will go into more details about discussing this my uh, rule of thumb is that i will always go back to the list of items or characteristics or factors that plays in deciding whether we are going to design our product based on a integral or modular architecture and keep these in your mind so whenever you have a product you think that change a new product it's a modular uh, variety it's also modular because it makes things easier for us to uh, change and modify standardization also this could be a modular uh, based uh, architecture when we talked about more performance and manufacturing this is integral so high performance we have also reducing to reduce the cost of manufacturing to be competitive this is integral and then the project management and system engineering so if we looked at these uh, examples so Motorola um, and Apple, they were looking a lot into their um, performance, right? That's what they're known for. So for Motorola, compact, as small as possible uh, product. Um, and this means that we are going to be having an integral uh, ar um, architecture. For um, Apple, all its products, it's about performance, so that's integral. Ford, this is a big car and we can, there's a lot of parts that need to be changed in this car. So I would assume that the Ford Explorer is a modular based uh, architecture. Now the roller blade, uh, blade inline skater, you can see that there's a lot of parts that can be changed uh, because of wear or replacement or whatever that thing is. And, but still it has a lot of performance in it, so you have a lot of components. So you can say that this is in the middle between integral and uh, modular and it depends on how do you see it you make the decision whether it's uh, modular or integral now for each aspect you need to have a um, reason why you're doing this or why you're characterizing it this way so for the Motorola it's compact that's uh, a valid reason to say that well it's integral Apple performance that's a valid reason Ford there's a lot of uh, parts in it it's um, uh, and also you have the standards uh, that you need to follow and then you have to you can use parts from other cars into this car so that's that's a, a clear modular model uh, for the blade i would assume that it is going to be it's, it's a better performance uh, and um, still it has a lot of parts that you can replace but i will lean a little bit more into the integral because it's stability and it's adding all of these performance features so i hope this helped you in identifying whether how would you look into your product as well and that you're developing and how would you characterize the uh, architecture of that uh, product. There is another simple way to look at these things uh, which is based on the product management and the, the system engineering level. So if you look at the, your product for example, uh, so the concept of integral or modular apply at several levels and you need to be careful about that. So what do I want you to think about that this is the system is your product and then you can break it down into chunks. Those are the subsystems and in each chunk or subsystem, you'll have your component, physical components, the parts that makes up this chunk. And if you have it this way, uh, you know that the chunk, they're, they're interacting with this component. So that's a clear modular setup. However, you can have also more uh, interaction, uh, which we call if you want to decompose this system and to see the interaction between them, you can characterize them into two ways, decomposition and interaction. So the decomposition, breaking down from a system to subsystem, those are chunks into the component. And then the interaction, you can have interaction between within the same chunk. So this is in the red arrows, this is my chunk, and these two components are communicating with each other. So this is interaction within the chunk. And interaction across chunks is that 
these components are talking with other com with components in another chunk. So this one and that one, we have this interaction with all the blue uh, arrows. You need when you design your components or you, when you design your system and your chunks and components to be aware of this um, reality. So I hope this clarifies first how can you um, approach uh, identifying what kind of architecture you want to have for your product and also these flow charts uh, the product are the decomposition and the interactions will help you when you build your product who which part is talking with which which part and which uh, chunk is talking with which chunk and the and the, you know interaction within chunks and interaction across chunks and you will be asked to develop something like this for your architecture and we'll talk more about it for your product um, later on in the activity the weekly activity grid thank you for watching until next time bye